If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Miles Johns here, the newest member of the UFC Bantamweight division after his victory over Richie Santiago at Dana White's Contender Series last week. And Miles, before we get into all that and more, there is one hard-hitting question that I have to get out of the way. One question I think fans okay. around the world would like the answer to. Have you or are you planning on taking part in this bottle cap challenge that is going around the internet? Um, I've thought about it a little bit. I'm not a big... Uh karate guy i don't do that many spinning kicks so i think i'd have to get some time in uh to practice it but we'll see what happens in all seriousness congratulations on the win and getting that contract when i introduce <laughs> you as as the newest member of the the ufc bantamweight division how does that sound like how does that feel when you hear that um it feels good you know it's um i've kind of visioned myself as being on that level for a while now so I'm happy to know that it's um, that it's legit now and that I am, but it's um, it's you know it's kind of like uh, you see yourself there for a while, so you kind of expect to be there after after so much work you put in. Has it really sunk in yet, or is it just kind of everything you expected it to be? Um, it hasn't it hasn't really sunk in yet. Uh, page out of my good friend and one of the guys I look up to most, Jeff Neal, is uh, I don't really feel like a UFC fighter until I get a couple wins in the cage. Like yeah. I'm officially part of the roster, but I got to get some wins under my belt before I can walk around like, yeah, I'm a UFC fighter. You know, check me out. You know what I mean? So It's kind of a, a rite of passage when I do these interviews, when I talk to a fighter for the first time, because I love hearing the stories about how, how it all happens, because they're all different. They all come from different perspectives. But how did you find the sport of mixed martial arts? What got you into the gym for the first time? Um, it was just kind of a natural progression for me. I've always loved um combat like when i was a kid i used to kind of daydream about like grand brawls and stuff with like the biggest bully in school you know i always love combat and a lot of my friends when they come over for birthday parties a lot of them will tell you that we, we had a pair of box gloves and we usually would, like make brackets and line people up and have people do different fights so it's always been in my blood but um i was wrestling my whole life and that did it for me um but then in my freshman year of college after the wrestling season, I took a MMA fight when my friends asked me if I wanted to in three weeks notice. And I did. And we trained for it. I fell in love with the training. And then um, we took that guy out in 13 seconds. So after that, I just fell in love. I was like, wow, this is this is what I need to be doing. And now fast forward, you know, all these years later and you fight on the contender yeah. series, you take on Richie Santiago, who is a fellow New England guy like myself. And I thought you looked absolutely fantastic in the fight. You got to show off a lot of your skill set with your striking and your wrestling <laughs> Being in there last week, you know, being a part of the fight, I don't know if you've gone back and watched it since, but were you happy with your performance overall? Um, honestly, I wasn't that happy with my performance overall. Um, there, there was a couple of things that go into that. The growing injury definitely had a part to do with that. Um, this whole training camp has really just been getting to the fight, and I've had a great team of guys um, from SAFE to Coach Mike at Extreme Studio to Dr. Man of the Reform um, that have been helping me get ready for this fight, but... but my gas tank definitely um, emptied a little bit sooner than normal. Um, like I said, there's a couple of things that go into that, but I, I th think I felt I felt like 50 percent in there, honestly. So I was happy that Dana loved the fight and that the crowd loved the fight. I always kind of bring an exciting fight. I'm um, I'm always out there just trying to take people's heads off. Like I mean, when I step in and I see you across the ring, I'm automatically I just switch on and I'm like, okay, I gotta I gotta take you out by any means necessary. So I think that added to the excitement of Coach Richie, just a zombie, just walking forward, walking through shots, and just trying to and just uh, continue to come at me. It just it just made for an awesome fight. So I'm happy with the excitement of it, but on my personal level, like how I performed, no, it definitely wasn't my best fight. So I'm I'm looking forward to making that debut and coming out and um, being healthy the whole all the way through the camp and really what I got to give. When you talk about the the groin injury, you said you fought, you know, you felt like you were maybe fifty percent in the fight. How bad was it in, in terms of preparation? Was there any discussion of you maybe pushing that fight back or anything like that? Like, how bad was it for you getting ready for this one? We knew we had to fight um, right away. We knew we had to fight um, when it happened in practice. I, like I told my coach, I stopped immediately 
and he knew from the look on my face he's like that seems torn I was like yeah I think it is like I've never I've had you know I've had some injuries with the groin before even from football way back in the day but when it popped in the way it felt I, I knew I knew that it was worse than it has been and I came home and I was laying on my back um trying kind of doing like a straight leg lift you know trying to see if I could get it up and I couldn't even get it up off the ground the first night so my wife is sitting there and she's like so what's the plan uh there was never any question on are you gonna fight like what's what's like we knew we were gonna show up to fight so from there I just started talking to my coaches and stuff and we started working on it um my physical therapist my chiropractor's physical therapist was like uh okay we're gonna turn the six week injury into a two to three week injury and so we can still get two to three weeks of like some good training in and stuff so we just got to work on it <laughs> and um it was it was tough like I said this whole camp has pretty much just been a mental battle of like all right we got to get to this fight um, I, I've been ready. Thank God I've been training before um, and staying healthy before. And so I felt like, um, I mean, I was coming off the hand injury, but I felt like I was mentally ready to fight. So I knew that if I got like, as long as we get there and I could be healthy come fight night, that, that would be good. It, I felt, I felt like 80% on fight night. It felt pretty good. We got it to a good point. I was moving around good. It wasn't really bothering me, but um, when some of that tiredness kicks in in that, in the second round, I felt it, I felt it give again and just pop again and um and so then we were working through it from there but um but it's it's better now i would say it's better than it was at the very beginning so it's all good part of it you you described richie and i thought there's a a perfect term like a zombie were you surprised at how tough he was i mean you hit him with some big shots in that fight you had him stunned a couple of times you actually broke his jaw and from what I've been told, his mouth is actually yeah. wired shut for the next month or so. What did you think of Richie's toughness in that fight? Well, um, I was a little bit surprised. I knew I knew, knew that he was tough. I'd seen his fights before. I knew he just walks forward throwing a lot of shots. But I did think uh, I did think I was going to put him out with some of those shots. So for him to just continue to move forward, I mean, there was a yeah, there was a couple times I thought I was going to put him out, or I thought I would drop him and then get the guillotine. I was going really strong for the guillotine so not only did he have a chin but he could scramble i mean he he just had no quit in him um so i was surprised and i was happy because that that's what makes a good fight and dana loved that aspect too so it really all worked out great i'm happy for richie considering dana's criteria for the show and and you were looking to finish the fight throughout the whole thing you know we saw what happened with brendan lockney in the first week of the season when the fight was over what was going through your mind did you feel like you you had done enough to to get a contract I did. I did feel like I had done enough to do, uh, get a contract. I wasn't happy with uh, how tired I was. You know, that's usually not that's usually not my fighting style. I just got a five round fight and felt like I saw um, some stuff in the tank after that one. So um, that's I wasn't happy with that. But I felt like I did enough to get a contract. I, I mean, I was going for broke. I think Dana. Everybody says Dana hates wrestling, but I think he can. I mean, those guys who have seen. I don't know how many fights. I mean, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of fights. They can tell when wrestling comes into play because it's a part of the style and it's part of who you are. It's not that I have no issues being on my feet. I love standing and banging. So I think when he sees me doing that and trying to take people's heads off and then adding the wrestling in and going for the choke. So, I mean, I, I sold out on like five of those chokes and he was able to scramble out of them. Um, I just I, I felt like uh, I felt the energy in the room was going to be enough. What was that moment like for you when, when you're sitting in the back and Dana White's talking to Laura Sanko? And I'm sure as a fighter, that could be quite stressful waiting for the news to come out, whether or not you made it on the roster or not. You, you know, you're a, how was that all like for you? Did, was it nerve wracking? Did you, were you confident? Were you ready to stand up and, and, and make the walk out there? It was, it was nerve wracking. I was confident. I was ready to, I was ready to hear what he had to say about my fight. Um, but it was, what was really fun and that I didn't really expect was that everybody kind of came together. You know, all the all the winners that everybody that won had to go into a room and we all sit in the chairs and kind of wait to hear what Dana has to say about us. And I was really thinking about these guys, too. Like, I hope, like, all these guys deserve it. All these guys have put their heart and soul into this. All these guys are, are here, like, just putting everything on the line. So we all, I, I mean, I want to see everybody get a contract. That would be the best case scenario, you know. So, um, so. It was just a fun experience to feel that. I mean, we didn't know these guys at all before, but we've been 
there the whole, I mean, we've been there for four days, cutting weight and stuff, see them in the sauna and stuff. Um, you really become close to them just because they're in your situation as well. So, uh, and one of the guys was supposed to fight my teammate and it was, it was just all love. I mean, they saw each other. He's like, Hey man, sorry, you weren't able to fight sucks. You'll have your time. You'll be in the UFC. And he's like, of course, man, happy you got the contract. It's just, it's just all love from those guys. You know what I mean? So, so it was a really good experience. That's great. And you being a Fortis MMA guy, you know, Safe Saoud has quickly become one of, if not the number one head coach in the sport right now. Fortis MMA has become one of, if not the top gym in the sport right now. What does that mean to you to to, 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 to be a part of that team and, and, and be part of that success? Because it's, it's really been an incredible run. It's so beautiful, man. I'm just, I'm so grateful to be where I'm at and under Coach Safe and with, and with my team. It has been a great run and we're we're just getting started. Everybody, there's just so much positive energy going on. Everybody's hungry. Every, I mean, guys who are getting ready for an amateur fight to guys who are getting ready for some of the first pro fights. Uh, one of my friends, Jesse Vasquez, fights next week. And this guy, I mean, he's, uh, I think he's two and one as a pro. So it's not like a huge fight yet. He's working his way up, but I can just see in his eyes, he's feeding off the energy from the team. Like this guy's ready. And, uh, and then the guys at the highest level and be running this team and stuff. Like it's awesome, man. Um, I love it. I'm just happy to be a part of it. Um, I've been blessed my whole life been to be part of great teams. My high school wrestling team had that same vibe. Um, when I started in as a freshman, we weren't ranked. And then my senior year, we took second in state. Like just once you get a team like that, that's all working together and all flowing together for the same common purpose. I mean, I mean, history can be. And that's what we're going to do at Fortis. A lot of people saw the news on social media yesterday about the Fortis MMA expansion. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, what can you tell us about that from your perspective and how exciting is that? This is really great stuff. It's super exciting. I mean, Coach keeps us on, a, on our toes all the time. This man is always is always trying to grow. He's always one step ahead, and that's what we love about him. And I mean, he's really set an example. Like, like It's not just some guy yelling at us from the corner that's eating whatever he wants and not and not staying in shape and not advancing too. this guy's reading books advancing every single day taking steps to become a better person and up the level every single day so he's leading by example and that's a secret i think to um our success one of them but uh, it's a uh, it's in the building that is going to have the food in it fit mills prep is going to be in it we're probably gonna have some pre-workout stuff hopefully my sponsor canatech labs will be able to get the protein powder and that in there um there's going to be a fitness facility all the recovery cryo um the the H2O chamber, like all that stuff is going to be in it. And there's going to be dorms for people who want to come and stay at Fortis and train for their camp and stuff, which we do a lot of do that. Uh, one of my friends, Stephen Wynn, is here right now. He's fighting on the contender on uh, season six. He's a tough, tough, tough dude. Um, I think he's six or seven to know. Um, I trained with him back in Kansas, and now he's here training for his contender series camp. So when people come into town, they can stay at the dorms and stuff there and get treated, and then all the members can go over there and get treated. I mean, it's just like – it's perfect. You know, it's in downtown Dallas. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's Dallas keeps growing and growing. So it's awesome, man. We're kind of making it like a college team, you know, like it's like, it's, it's legit. So, um, it's, I'm excited for it. I guess the question I have, and I, and I, I would guess that a lot of people watching this right now are going to have the same question. How is the groin now? Um, and in terms of when you'd like to make your octagon debut, do you have a, a sort of timetable for that at this point, or do you want to take some time and sort of smell the roses and, and enjoy the fruits of your labor, so to speak? Well, I'm not enjoying any, any fruits of my labor quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done hardly anything yet. But, um, but I do want to take some time to get healed. Um, we're already working on it right now. Um, I'm doing stretches and stuff for it. I mean, it's, uh, it got a little bit, I would say, in four weeks. I'm doing some live goes. But right now, I'm moving on it a little bit, and we're just taking the steps. Um, I want to make my UFC debut as, as soon as I possibly can. You know, as soon as this is healed up, let my coach know, hey, you can just let him know we're ready to go. And um, I want to get back in there. You know, I felt like it was, it was too long in between since my last fight. It had been like nine months, and I mean, I'm just – I'm excited, man. I'm hungry. I'm getting a lot of love from um, support from people back home, old fans and new fans, like telling me telling me what the my potential – um, in the UFC. And, and I mean, that just feeds me. I mean, that just makes me, you know, makes me so hungry, like lights of fire and me hearing Dana's words and stuff. Um, I, lo I love all that stuff, man. It just makes me want to reach to higher levels. So I'm ready to get in there and uh, start mixing things up. Look at the red sled. He's all oh, there place. you go. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> he's made his, he just made his room way all the way around this room. So I just show him in there. 
Oh, it gets it gets better, man. I got a six year old, and you know it it just gets better and better. All these challenges and tribulations. You think being a professional fighter is hard? You wait, you wait till he gets a little bit older. Things are gonna get real interesting. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. That's awesome. It, it, it's funny you mention how people are telling you about your potential because you know I think a lot of people see that as well in the, in the media sphere and everything. You know, and everyone is tough in the UFC that's why they're there in the first place. I mean, the division that you're in is is loaded with depth and talent and you come in with quite a resume, you know, being a LFA Bantamweight champion, having that win on the Contender Series. And I've heard a lot of people say that you're ready for the top 20 in that division right now. And it's certainly hard to argue with that after that performance on Tuesday, especially with the injury you were going through. What kinds of matchups are you looking at? Like, is there anyone out there that you can see yourself matching up with right away? Um, yeah, there's a there's a couple guys out there. Uh, Cole Smith, I would, uh, Cole Smith, I think is a good fight. Mitch Gagnon is a good fight. Um, Domingo Pilarte is a good fight. He got in there when I he was in LFA ranked under me. I thought I was gonna get in, and he got in, so that'd be a good one. Um, Chris Gutierrez is a good fight. Um, there, yeah, there's a couple guys that are all at this all at this level. Um, I think people do see the potential and the athleticism and the wrestling pedigree, and so they're saying I'm top 20. I know that there's a lot of young guys or guys that are at the bottom level that think that they're top 20 the thing about it it is like in the ufc everybody's so tough everybody's so skilled um there's a mental aspect that goes into that you know what i mean and i mean it's a game of inches the difference between the top 20 and the top and the number 30 guy is not it's not that much you know it's a a game of inches so i'm sure there's a lot of guys that think that they're at that level too and i'm just uh i'm here to show them that i'm just a little bit more ready you're obviously you know i talked to a lot of fighters coming out the contender series and a lot of people are you know, don't look that far ahead. They don't look at potential matchups or anything like that that quickly. So I think that's really interesting. So I might as well throw this out there. I, I'm not going to throw out the term dream matchup, I guess in a way, I, I, maybe I am, but is there anyone in that division? I mean, you're, you're on the roster now and I'm sure you've kind of looked at that down the road, but is there anyone in that division right now where you're like, damn, like this is a fight I want someday. Like if I get matched up with this particular fighter, it's going to be a lot of fun, kind of a goosebump type of matchup for me. Is there anyone like that in that division that sticks out yeah. to you? Uh, for sure. Pedro Munoz, uh, I think, is just an awesome fight for me. He's like, he's my size. He's kind of built the same way as me. He loves to just um, stand up and throw hands. And he also has great ground. So, so and I got to get some, uh, I got to get paid back with my dude, Matt Hobart, um, back in the day. He got the best of him back then. So, um, yeah, I would love, and obviously he's at the top of the ranks. I would love, if Pedro had a fight and somebody dropped out, and they put me in that fight anytime that would just be like i'd be that'd be gold i would love that <laughs> i love that. that that's a fun matchup so it's definitely something to look forward to <laughs> miles <laughs> johns okay, joining the program right now one of the newest <laughs> members of the ufc bantamweight roster after defeating richie santiago at dana white's contender series last week miles before we let you go man uh let the folks know where to find and follow you on the web social media if you want to shout out any sponsors any shout outs etc the floor is yours uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram at Miles X Johns, and uh, I'm just so thankful for everybody in my team: Fit Mills Prep, uh, Canatech Labs, Doctor Man and Reform, Coach Mike, at Extreme Studio, and of course my coach and my team at Fortis MMA. Um, we're doing it. Keep an eye on us because uh, we're gonna keep climbing the rankings. Congratulations again, Miles! Fantastic performance, continued success. We look forward to seeing you make your Octagon debut later on this year. Hey, thank you, sir.